This time on Film Ranker, we are looking at Hayao Miyazaki. The beloved Japanese animator has been at the helm of 11 magical films and has managed to achieve worldwide success. Miyazaki's films have had a huge hand in pushing animation to new heights in terms of both production and story. This list would probably be better named great to best than worst to best, but either way, let's count them down. Number 11, The Castle of Cagliostro. Miyazaki had worked on several Lupin films before this one in a bunch of different roles, so it made since as the start of his official directing career. That said, this doesn't feel like what most of us would think of as a Miyazaki film, but more of a talented young director playing with somebody else's toys. It's still fun and silly with some ludicrous bits like uh, scuba diving up a waterfall. And for fans of Lupin in general, it's a solid entry into the series. But for Miyazaki fans, It's probably best thought of as the starting point. Number 10, Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. Looked at today, Nausicaa feels like a taster of what was to come. It has a strong female lead. It features a world on the brink of disaster that's torn between technology and nature and unable to understand the important balance between the two. It also largely takes place in the sky, Miyazaki's favorite setting. It is, however, obviously an early film that isn't quite as focused or nuanced as the later ones. And there's something just a little bit strange about the art that makes it feel more like something out of Heavy Metal Magazine than Studio Ghibli. That said, it's fascinating to see the seeds being planted. Number 9, Castle in the Sky. This was the first Miyazaki film that really feels like a Miyazaki film. As the title suggests, it takes place mostly in the sky. It follows a pair of likable young protagonists, and it's just a generally fun adventure. It's very much a quest film, using a roadmap that clearly inspired later movies like Atlantis. And like Atlantis, the payoff doesn't quite live up to the journey, as the titular castle does still have a bit of wonder, but we're left wishing we could have seen it in its heyday. The helpful pirates are a real highlight of the film, as are a few of the action scenes, including the early train car chase, the rescue, and the later sky battles. It's a fun film that will likely move even higher up the list if you're watching it with kids. Number 8, Porco Rosso. Porco Rosso is one of Miyazaki's lightest films. It's kind of an action adventure in a land where everyone uses World War One style single seat fighter planes and focuses on a bounty hunter who chases air pirates and has been magically turned into a pig. And although that premise may sound weird, there's a real underlying classic feeling to all of it. It's got a touch of Casablanca underneath its sometimes comedic and cartoony shell. There's also some real emotion in this movie, including a moving flashback of Porco losing his best friend in a dogfight. It's an underrated classic that has more fun and more weight than you might expect. Number 7, Ponyo. This one feels like more of a traditional kids' movies than most on this list. It feels a little bit like a classic Hans Christian Andersen tale, but with a very modern twist, and I guess that's because it kind of is, but very, very loosely. It's a simple story that feels smaller than many of the others, but it does exactly what it sets out to do. It's also worth noting that the main boy is based on Miyazaki's own son, and you can feel the love and care that's put into the character who really shines as the heart of this film. Number 6, Kiki's Delivery Service. In 
Some ways, this movie kind of flips the status quo upside down. Instead of having a person from the normal world being thrust into a magical situation, you've got a magical person trying to find her way in the mundane world. Kiki is immediately likable, and even though she's a witch weirdly living on her own at 13, she's one of Miyazaki's most relatable characters. Partly, that's because her adventures are mostly kind of everyday adventures. She cleans houses and delivers toys and just interacts with people. And that is the charm of the film. It's lovably simple and it's just comfortable being what it is. Number five, The Wind Rises. Miyazaki's most recent film is also his most grown up. It stays almost entirely outside of his usual touches of magic, aside from a delightful series of shared dreams. Instead, it follows the story of a man who dreams of making beautiful airplanes, but who is caught under the shadow cast by World War II in Japan. For Westerners, it's a rare glimpse into the humanity on the other side. For everyone else, it's a relatable tale of chasing dreams and dealing with the heartbreaks and sacrifices and magical moments of a fully lived life. It's also fitting that... What at the time looked to be Miyazaki's final film would revolve around a character so obsessed with flying. Number four, Howl's Moving Castle. Mixing elements of fairy tales, mythology, and World War II imagery, Howl's Moving Castle is a surprisingly touching story. For a film about a moving house brimming with magic, it's interesting just how subtle and grounded this film is. It's such a unique movie, a coming-of-age road trip that focuses on a main character that's actually growing younger and stays almost entirely indoors. Miyazaki films are known for their relatable heroines, but few are as memorable as Sophie, who quickly becomes the heart and moral compass of the growing gang of oddballs. The film also excels at allowing its characters to be changed in meaningful and affecting ways, including Sophie's own gradual breaking of her curse, which, like most things in this movie, happens slowly by degrees. Number three, Princess Mononoke. Perhaps Miyazaki's most violent film is at its heart a story of humanity versus nature and the delicate balance between the two. Everything about it feels a bit different than the usually sentimental fare of Studio Ghibli. The edges are harder, the blood is redder, the battles with terrifying repercussions and some real moments of actual horror. There's also a huge cast of interesting characters of warriors and wolves and gods and thieves all living in a fully realized world on the edge of collapse. Of course, none of the world building would matter without the story, and Princess Mononoke tells a great one with quests and battles and heroes and villains and magic and danger and just moments of sadness that always feel earned. Number two, My Neighbor Totoro. Everyone loves the character of Totoro. He's the face of the studio, after all. But what makes this film special isn't the magic or the forest spirits or the cat bus or even Big Gray himself. It is the family at the heart of it. My Neighbor Totoro shines because it spends just enough time in the magical realm, but only goes there for the right reasons. Everything extraordinary is used to push the story of the two sisters and the father who's trying to raise them while also moving house and helping his ailing wife. It's actually pretty heavy stuff, but it's told in a way that stays warm and wonderful even when the sky above is at its grayest. Number one, Spirited Away. A modern-day Alice in Wonderland that pushes the concept to creative and sometimes terrifying new levels. Spirited Away was an instant classic, and kind of the film that propelled Studio Ghibli and Miyazaki to worldwide acclaim, and for good reason. The protagonist is relatable and impossible not to root for. The pacing is perfect, with things always feeling hectic, but still with each weird new event, everything is given time to breathe, and the story, while it's necessarily strange, has a kind of internal logic that 
feels right. It's a journey with a lot of stops and a huge cast of characters, but every single one is memorable and important. It's a ticket to an imaginative world that will stay in your mind long after the credits roll. And that's it. I know people have very personal connections to a lot of these films, and generally, if you like one or two, you probably love them all. So let me know what your own top few are in the comments, and please like and subscribe, and hopefully I will see you all next time.